Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a super important health topic that you need to know about deep vein thrombosis or DVT. Whether you've heard the term before or not, this video is going to break down everything from what DVT is to why it happens and how to check for a blood clot in your leg and even how to prevent it all in an easy to understand manner. I'm Dr. John, board certified in internal medicine as well as geriatric medicine. And this channel is here to promote your health and your well-being. Think your health. What exactly is DVT? DVT stands for deep vein thrombosis, which basically means a blood clot forms in one of the deep veins in your body. These veins aren't the ones you can see under your skin. They are the larger ones deep inside your legs. Most of the time, DVT occurs in the legs, but it can also happen in other parts of the body, like the pelvis or arms. Imagine your veins as tubes that carry blood back to your heart. Blood flows through your veins smoothly, but when a clot forms, it blocks the flow of blood like a traffic jam. Blood gets stuck behind the clot, causing swelling and pain. This can be dangerous because if that clot breaks free, it can travel through your bloodstream to your lungs, causing something called a pulmonary embolism. This is life-threatening, which is why DVT is such a big deal. Okay, so what are the signs that you might have DVT? Here's the tricky part. Not everyone with DVT has symptoms. In fact, some people don't realize they have it until something more serious like a pulmonary embolism happens. However, when symptoms do appear, they often look like this. You have a swelling that usually happens in just one leg. It could be your calf or your thigh or even the whole leg that feels puffy and bigger than normal. Then you might have pain. The pain often feels like a cramp or soreness in the affected leg, usually in the calf. It might hurt more when you stand or walk. And then you might feel some warmth or redness. The, the skin around your swollen area may feel warm to the touch and look red or discolored. And then there's tenderness. When you press on the area that's swollen or painful, it might feel tender, like a bruise or even though you didn't injure yourself. Now, it's important to note that these symptoms could be mistaken for something else like a muscle strain or cramp or just general soreness. But if you notice these symptoms, especially if they appear suddenly after sitting for a long time or after surgery, it's important to get checked out by your doctor right away. By the way, if you're interested in looking at the signs and symptoms of another common disease such as gallbladder stones, click right here. So why do people get DVT? There are a few different reasons and some people are at more risk than others. Let's break it down. Prolonged sitting or inactivity, ever heard of economy class syndrome? It's the nickname for what happens to some people when they sit still for a long time, like on a long flight or road trip. When you don't move your legs for a while, your blood flow slows down, and that's when a blood clot forms. It's not just flights though. Sitting at a desk for hours without moving around can also put you at risk. Certain surgeries, especially ones on your legs or hips, can raise your risk of DVT. This is because surgery can damage your blood vessels and afterwards you're often less mobile while you recover. Any injury that reduces movement like a broken bone can have a similar effect. The older you get the higher your risk of developing DVT. This is especially true for people above the age of 60, but it's not something that only affects older adults. Young people can get DVT too, especially if they have other risk factors. Some people are more likely to develop blood clots because of their family history. If your parents or grandparents had DVT, you might have a higher risk of getting it too. Obesity is also a risk factor. Carrying extra weight can put more pressure on your veins, especially your lower body. This can make it harder for blood to flow normally, increasing the risk of clot formation. Smoking damages your blood vessels and makes it easier for your blood to clot. It's another reason why smoking is so dangerous for your health. Certain medications can make your blood more likely to clot. Birth control pills, hormone replacement therapy, and even some cancer treatments can 
increase your risk of DVT. Pregnant women are at high risk of DVT because the growing baby puts pressure on the veins in the pelvis and legs. This pressure can slow down blood flow leading to clots. The risk continues during the period after pregnancy. So if you're a mom, be aware of this. So how to check for a blood clot in your leg? Now, what if you're worried that you might have a blood clot in your leg? If one leg is more swollen than the other, especially the calf or the thigh, that could be a sign of a clot. The swelling might happen suddenly or even gradually. There's pain or tenderness. Pain from DVT can feel like a cramp or soreness. And if you press on the area which appears swollen, it might feel tender even though there's no visible injury. And then it might feel warm. The skin over the clot may feel warmer than the rest of your leg. This is because blood gets trapped behind the clot causing an inflammation. Then it might feel red or discolored. The affected area might turn red or have a sort of bluish tint to it. This is another common sign of DVT and something you should be aware of. The Hohmann's test. Okay, here's something called the Hohmann's test that doctors sometimes use to check for DVT. It's not 100% accurate, but you can give, it can give a clue if there's something wrong. And here's how it works. Number one, sit down and stretch out your legs. Number two, have someone gently press on the back of your knee while you pull your toes towards your body, flexing your foot. Number three, if this motion causes sharp pain in your calf, it could be a sign of DVT. Now keep in mind that not everyone with DVT will have a positive Hohmann's test. And some people without DVT can also feel pain with this test. So while it's a Quick check, it's always best to follow up with your healthcare provider if you suspect DVT. So when to check with your healthcare provider. If you notice any signs, especially after sitting for a long time, after surgery, or you have a family history of clots, you should seek medical advice right away. DVT is dangerous because if the clot breaks off, it can travel all the way to your lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism, which is a life-threatening emergency. Diagnosis of DVT. So how do doctors confirm whether you have a blood clot? Here's some of the most common ways DVT is diagnosed. Doppler ultrasound. This is the most common and non-invasive way to diagnose DVT. It uses sound waves to create an image of your veins, helping doctors see if there's a clot blocking the blood flow. And it's one of the first tests a doctor orders. D-dimer test. The D-dimer test is a blood test that looks for a substance in your blood that's, that's produced when your blood clot breaks down. High levels of D-dimer of can suggest that a clot is present. However, high levels can also be caused by other things. Therefore, your healthcare provider should be looking at other testing, your physical examination, and history to help with the diagnosis. Venography. In some cases, doctors might use a more invasive test called venography. This involves injecting a dye into your veins, which shows up on x-rays and helps pinpoint exactly where the clot is located. This test is used less frequently nowadays, but it can be helpful in very complicated cases. Treatment of DVT. So what happens if you're diagnosed with DVT? Don't panic, there are several ways to treat it, and here are the most common treatments. Number one, blood thinners. The main treatment for DVT is blood thinners, also known as anticoagulants. These medications don't break up the clot, but they prevent it from getting bigger and stop new clots from forming. Over time, your blood will naturally dissolve the clot on its own. There are different types of blood thinners, including warfarin, an older blood thinner that requires regular blood testing, heparin, often given through as injections in the hospital, and newer anticoagulants, medications like rivaroxaban or apixaban, which don't require much monitoring. The brand names, respectively, are Sorelto and Eliquis. Depending on your situation, you might need to take a blood thinners for a few months, or even longer, and sometimes even for life. And if you want me to make a video looking at these very medications such as Xarelto or Eliquis. In more detail, leave a comment below. Compression stockings. These special socks are designed to help keep blood flowing in your legs. They're often recommended for people recovering from DVT because they reduce swelling, 
and prevent blood from pooling in your veins. You might wear them for several months or even longer. Number three, thrombolytics. In more severe cases, doctors may use thrombolytics, which are medications that dissolve blood clots. This treatment is more aggressive and usually is reserved for life-threatening situations, such as when a clot is very large or there's a risk of pulmonary embolism. Number four, surgery. In rare cases, surgery may be required to remove a blood clot. This is usually only done if other treatments haven't worked or if the clot is causing serious issues like cutting off blood flow to your leg. And now you know how to check for the symptoms at home. But remember, it's always important to see a doctor or your healthcare provider for a proper diagnosis. And if you're interested in other videos, check right here or check right here. Have a good day and think your health. Oh my God, this is terrible. Okay, because, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. I don't know if the background even looks. Okay, goodbye.